Don't go in the woods. Don't go in the dark. This is what we're doing. I saw you guys wearing these things and I thought I'd be up to you guys. How are you doing? What kind of camera is that? Sony? Dealing with you know what we were about, and uh, he explained that he was German and Irish, and I said, well, you know, actually, the Irish and German actually go back to Negro descent. You deal with the Byzantine Empire that was ruling for a thousand years, which can actually be proven in the scriptures when the Satan was closed up for a thousand years, okay? Because wickedness wasn't spread across the earth as it was back when the Greeks came into power and then it transferred over to the Roman power. So you have the era of the Greco-Roman. Greco-Rome, Greco-Roman era. It's a transition between Greek to Roman. That's why you have Zeus turning to Jupiter, while you have Ares turning to Mars, while you have uh, uh, Aphrodite turning to Venus, okay? You getting played, you been played, y'all been played, we all been played. So when are y'all gonna be able and ready to accept truth? And first of all, we're going to give all, all praises, praises to Yahweh, Yahweh our Hashem, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. Because He is who rule over us, and He is who rule over our mind. Yahweh, Akai. Don't take the microchip. Okay? Don't take the microchip. Now let's go into some scriptures. All right. Let's go into some further edification, man. It's deeper than just a, a microchip. Right. It's like they say, don't take your microchip. Don't commit adultery. Don't go off on the Sabbath. Don't eat pork. If you're going to keep making videos about don't take chip, well, make videos about don't eat pork. Don't commit adultery. It's the same thing. We know what we ain't supposed to be doing, what we need to be doing. But let's get to the matter at hand. Let's deal with the scriptures. Right? Okay? So, just so like it real quick. Read that James 1. 5. This is James 1 and 5. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Yahweh, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given to him. Right. See that? It say liberally. Freedom. Freely. Freely. You have telling you have men telling you that you have to chalk up dollars just because they tell you something out of the book that ain't even correct. Check it out real quick. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of Yahweh. That's right. Not Go to who was set up. Go to the source. It don't say no setup right there. It says Yahweh. That's what it says. And Yahweh left the book for us. Because for remember, because remember, at the end of the day, people keep talking about who taught you, right? But they forget that they all go back to the same source. God. The source is the same. You going to the same source I'm going to. Or in the same water. Allegedly. You going to the same source we going to. That is true. true. That's what we all as Israelites, we're supposed to be going to the source and teaching it rightly. And real quick, ultimately, where's the actual understanding come from? Yeah, how? The increase comes from Yahweh. Yahweh give it the increase. Uh -huh. So. I can go to this brother and ask him to show me or give me a breakdown on the scripture and I might not be able to receive it. I may not see it. 
ultimately the understanding comes from that's how, so that's why Romans 14 clearly explains that every man be persuaded in his own mind. mind. So you can't force a man to do or tell him how he's supposed to accept or digest the information that's coming from the heavens. You have to let that man have his own relationship with Yahweh. Right. With God. You can't put Yahweh a time, Right. You can't put a timetable on that. It's only one mediator. And remember, in Matthew it says that no man know the Father except of the Son, and of the Son except the Father. So. Where's all the other roadblocks? There's none. And if you allow the roadblocks to come, then no wonder why you're in darkness. Okay. And you don't have the light coming in front of your frontlets. Okay? This is Romans chapter 3, verse 4. Yahweh forbid, yeah, let Yahweh be true, but every man a liar, let as Yahweh it is written. Now, what does that mean by let Yahweh be true? Let Yahweh be true. Why? Right? Because first of all, what did he give us that was true and perfect? The law. Behold. The law. I am. Not true. Not just true. Turn on, give me second, second John 6. Second John 6. This is second John 6. And this is love. That we walk after his commandments. See that? Commandments. When you got guys be talking about oh, continue what thou hast learned. Read that again. And this is love. That we walk after his commandments. Uh -huh. Who is his? Yahweh. Right. Not man's commandments. Yahweh. Uh -huh. This is the commandment. That as ye have heard from the beginning. See? From the beginning. Continue what thou hast learned. Continue what was ordained to your nation. What was handed down from the mountain. You know what I'm saying? It, it, everybody keeps trying to exalt themselves and put themselves in front of Yahweh Shai, the son of man, the star who fell from heaven that had the key to the bottomless pit. It ain't no damn Christ of Wilhelm. And if you believe that, you a damn fool. Because that's nowhere in the Bible. And if it is, show us where it's at. You can't show it. That's why you crickets and quiet talking about the damn microchip. Do a lesson about that damn skull and bones. Jacket. <laughs> hey. Show us, man. Listen. Right. I got a precept. Go ahead. And this is Wisdom of Solomon 6, and um, I'll start at 17. It says, For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. And the care of discipline is love. See that? Discipline. Start again. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 17 says, For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. Discipline, right? And what's that? And in the, Proverbs 1 and uh, 5. Mm -hmm. right. and in the, Proverbs 1 and 5. That's the source. Because it's going to build off that. See, it says, A skillful man asks unto it, and a foolish man casts it behind him. Okay. So we telling you guys okay. that whoa, okay. 1, 2, and 3 is not the world wars. It's not. And it's not. And don't worry, we're going to go into it again. Definitely. As many times as it takes. As many times as it takes. Go ahead. Yeah, Proverbs 1 and 5. A wise man will hear oh. and will increase learning. See that? A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Uh, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Keep going. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. There's the discipline right there. That's discipline. Fear Yahweh. Fear not them who can kill the body, but fear him that can kill the body and the soul. That's the problem with you guys. You fear them that only can kill the body. You think when Stephen got stoned after they killed him, who was in control? The father of spirits. That's why he seen him on top of the, of, of the sapphire horizon. What color sapphire? <laughs> but, 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 this is each one. Oh, okay. Go ahead. That was saying. Right, okay, right. Solomon, 6 okay. and 17. For the very true beginning of her is in the desire of discipline. Who's a her? Let's talk about wisdom. wisdom. It ain't talking about no camp. It ain't talking about no man. It's talking about the handmaid of your house, which is wisdom. Go ahead. And the care of discipline is love. 
The care of discipline is love. We just read love. Did we not just read love? What? Right. And love is the keeping of her law. Love is the keeping of her laws. Continue what thou hast learned. Not what some man. Why do you think when Ezra came and stood forth amongst the congregation, what made them stand up? <laughs> what made them stand up? Huh? When Ezra came and and seen the congregation in Nehemiah the 8th chapter. What caused the congregation to stand up? What did he do to make them stand up? That's good. upon precept, not teaching a pamphlet. When you deal with this book, you have to go precept upon precept, not extrapolation. Okay? Go ahead. 8, 6, 8 and 5. 8 and 5, sorry. Nehemiah 8 and uh, verse 5. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all people. All right? For he was above all the people. Uh -huh. And when he opened it... And why was he above all the people? Because he understood where to lead the people. He understood his obligations as a shepherd. So uh, uh, the obligations of a shepherd is not to deceive the people and tell them that this scripture is talking about this character, but it's really not. This scripture is saying this, but it's really not. This scripture says this, but it really doesn't. That's why he laid the book open. So he laid open the book. Go ahead. And I'm going to read that again from the top. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all people. For he was uh, above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord. The all great the power. people stood. See? That's the question I asked. What made the people stand up? The book. Yeah. The book. That's what made them stand up. The word of Yahweh. This is the proof. Check it out. This in the test to your faith. Go ahead. Right. Because he, he didn't exalt himself. He gave all praise and honor to, to oh, Yahweh. Yeah. Right. And it's verse 6, it said, Ezra blessed the Lord, the great power, and all the people answered, Amon, Amon. With he didn't open the book and say, we got the truth, and if you ain't following us, you're going to die. <laughs> no. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their face to the ground through the influence of the book. It says, the love is the keeping of her law. And the giving heed unto her laws is not heed unto the seducing doctrines of men, unto her laws. Wait. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. See? The insurance. When you keep that precepts of Yahweh, you have insurance. Assurance. You have assurance. Insurance, assurance. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. And it corruption maketh us near unto Yahweh. Therefore, desire. Oh, he says what? And in corruption maketh us near unto Yahweh. He says, and in corruption maketh yeah. us near. And in corruption maketh mm -hmm. us near unto Yahweh. Now, what's the incorruption? What's the incorruption? Yahweh. 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 Remember, he, it was him that got victory over the death. He was the one that changed corruption into incorruption. First Corinthians 15 chapter. You see, if I keep sitting here breaking, trying to bring out scriptures about you exalting me, you're not going to understand that. Because you so focused on me and study Yahweh Shah. Go ahead. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. It says, if your delight be... It says, desire what? Therefore, the desire of wisdom bring up to a kingdom. That's the dominion right there in June. That's the dominion right there. That they speak evil against us. The kingdom. Go ahead. All right. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, 
Honor wisdom. Wait a minute, all ye kings, all ye scepters, right? Yeah. Just like Psalms 2 and 8 when he says, all ye kings, all ye judges. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. All right. It says, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. As for wisdom, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity and bring the knowledge- From the beginning of her what? Nativity. What? Nativity. It's your culture. Culture. The beginning of her nativity. The culture. Understanding your heritage that was once taken away from you. Go ahead. And bring the knowledge of her into light and will not pass over the truth. Neither will I go with consuming envy, for such a man shall have no fellowship with wisdom. You see that? When you so busy envying another man or worrying about what another man doing, wisdom can't dwell with you. But you're not focused on your house side. You so focused on trying to bring someone down. Make yourself look good. And you see, the thing is, we're not about bringing no one down. All we're saying is, is that this is not the Bible. We're about picking this up. That's it. Uh -huh. And what we've been what we've been expounded upon from who we came up under is not in the Bible. Uh -huh. And what we're saying is that instead of us taking hold of man's word, we have to give ourselves the preeminence and build our own our own relationship with the book. Okay. Rather than what someone says to you, you know, it's it's, it's unwise. Don't okay. come to back to your here. Because uh, yeah, the scripture does say you would know a man by his speech, and of course you would understand a man that speaks with season because he's coming from what? From the, the Bible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the only place he's gonna come from. Come All right. Twenty-four says, "But the multitude of the wise is the welfare of the world, the welfare of the world." So the welfare of the world. So now, those are the men who are going precept upon precept versus what the elders taught. Well, any man talk to that fact. Yeah. Right. Well, we're going to use what's been used to embed this bondage right. upon the minds of the congregation. Go ahead. And a wise king is the upholding of the people. You want to say it's the honor of kings is who searches all the matter? Right. Well, it's funny how they say the Bible contradicts itself, but we always read things that say the exact same thing that the other side of the page is saying. Go ahead. There's a punch number, right? It says, receive therefore instruction through my words, and it shall do you good. Say it again, bro. It says, receive right. therefore instruction through my words. Through who words? My words. The elders? My words. Who nurtured you up? My words. Who taught you up? My words. What is that? Where did this come from? From the most high. That's right. My words. That's the that's your house speak. Mm. And it shall do you good. Right? And it so shall do you good. Okay? You got some more of that? Alright, let me hear you real quick. This is Ephesians 4 and uh, 14. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about uh, with every wind of doctrine. See that said again. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 14. That we henceforth be no more children. See? We henceforth be no more children. Toss to and fro. Toss to and fro because that's what's going on right now. Yep. You have these young minds that are being tossed to and fro. How do you stop? Because of wayward tossed. doctrines. That's right. You stop from being tossed to and fro by starting to read, man. You get into the pages yourself. Yourself. Pre eminence. Yep. And right. carried about with every wind of doctrine. See, I, oh, see, oh, but I ain't with what you gotta talk. They ain't with who? They ain't with what you gotta talk. Ain't gotta talk. Come on, man. Go ahead. By the slight of men and cunningness, craft and cunning craftiness. See that cunning craftiness. <laughs> yep. Cunning craftiness. Yep. Whereby they lie and wait to deceive. See that? Go ahead. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things. Which is the head, even as the truth in love, right? Keeping the commandments. Is, keep, there you go. Which is the head of him, which is who? Mashiach. Mashiach. Cut. So why did he give men teaching wayward doctrines that it ended with the influence of Yahweh Shah? Mashiach. Why, Sway? <laughs> huh? Now let's go to Isaiah 28. Because you. you know what's crazy? 
as us being Israel, we've been out here teaching for a amount of years. We've been, you know, we, we read the scripture a lot, right? Precept upon precept, long upon line. Here a little, there a little, see? That's how you gotta go in the Bible. But you know what's crazy? You actually, a lot of you guys, a lot of you organizations, a lot of you bodies, you actually been mocking yourselves. Hey, you read that scripture. That's, and that's the thing, when y'all read that Isaiah 28, you don't start in line one, line upon line, man. Like it ain't, you gotta like right. You gotta hear the whole letter, man. All y'all do is go right to the precept upon precept. That fits your, that fits your cunning, craftiness. Try starting yeah. that, try starting that 28 and one on down like you should do Revelations. Alright? Let's so check it out. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna jump right to verse seven. It says uh, Isaiah 28 and seven. Just know that it's Israel that's being spoken to. Okay? In the 28th chapter. That's it. Isaiah 28 and seven. But they also have air through wine and through strong drink. See that through wine and strong drink, dealing with doctrines. Yep. Now you have the idiots say, no, that's you guys. You guys changing the doctrine. The doctrine never change. What you niggas are teaching is to change. That's right. Boy, through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. Right. The priest and the prophet have air through strong the drink. The priest and the prophet have air through strong drink. Hey, what is that All strong these drink? BibleProphecy.com or wherever y'all learn from. Right. No, because at the end of the day, like I said, if you teach that the three woes are the three world wars, you are endorsing the Balfour Declaration, declaration as far as the Khazars That's right. getting the land in Palestine, in Israel. You're endorsing it, bro. It's nowhere in the Bible. Go ahead. All right. The priest and the prophet have air through strong drink. And they are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. Right. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. They err in vision. They, they stumble, stumble in judgment. judgment. How many times all the contradictions we hear? Oh, the Father's spirits is us. Oh, the Father's spirits is Yahweh. What, what is it, bro? What, what is it? Dude, keep reading. All right, verse 8. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness. You see that? All the tables are full of vomit. You know why? Because a lot of these doctrines that's being pushed out here are from doctrines that came from men and you they, they never researched and looked it up. See what I'm saying? They never looked it up. They never researched it. They just took it as it was and just ran with it. And we know a dog, dogs always go back to make vomit. There you go. So they became comfortable with the dogmas that were taught by men rather than searching the scriptures like the church of Berea. Proving all things, go ahead. All right. For all the tables are full of vomit and filthiness so that there is no clean place. So whom so shall he no teach? no clean place, go ahead. <laughs> whom shall he teach knowledge? So now the Lord's like, okay, there's a table full of vomit. These priests and these visions, they all, all these different leaders out here trying to show Israel the way. But he said, whom shall teach knowledge? Go ahead. Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Now, of course, we've been always bringing out the scripture talking about, you know, precept upon precept. But it's a little deeper than that. Yep. Okay? Because see, Isaiah's actually cutting a behavior that's being clearly displayed right now today. Men that are not going precept upon precept. Men that are reading one scripture and then give an entire extrapolation or dogma to support their views and ideologies. That's right. Go ahead. Which is going to make this next thing his brother read make total sense. Go yes, ahead. sir. Read this again. It said, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand so doctrine? So if you want knowledge, and you want to understand the doctrine of Yahweh that's dropped from the rain, then you have to go according to what? Keep going. Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So who's really the third titty, man? So wait a minute. It says, them that are weaned from the milk and draw from the bus. Who's really so wait a minute, what's, what's, what's the milk? You knowing you're an Israelite. Yeah. You knowing that you come from Israel. You under the curses, right? right? You keep the Sabbath. Nah. It's about trying to rehearse the righteous act, Basics, right? Man. But then now, you grow. Good for y'all. Right, that's, that's, that's also a metaphor, man. You off the titty, man. That's right. You off the titty. You doing this on your own, man. Right? Three minutes. Let's that's keep right. in. You searching the scriptures for yourself, man. Because when the child leaves the mother's breast, that means that child is gaining some type of preeminence, that's right? That's right. right. Absolutely. So y'all still on the eldest titty, man. That's right. What he said, what they said. So who's really the third titty? What this say. What All this right? say. 
Yeah, it's crazy. Go ahead, bro. Hold on. I like the defense. Um, their defense will be when you continue in the things that you have learned. Oh, I got oh, wait, oh, Moses. My son. That's what you continue in. You just read it. It says, love is keeping the commandments which you have heard in the beginning before any of us was here. But still was here. But wasn't here, but still was. <laughs> I gotta preach that. But our thoughts are not his thoughts. God. What you got? Go ahead. I got uh, Ecclesiastes 33 and 17. Consider that I labor not for, for myself only. You see that? Go ahead. Consider that I not labor for myself only. But for all of them that seek not learning. See that? Seek learning. Seek learning. That's what we out here about. Seek and learning. And it's for free. You ain't got to charge y'all. Just learn. Listen. Go along with the scriptures. See it for yourself. Now let's see how we let's see how the doctrine is supposed to come out. All according right. to the prophet Yeshua. All right. Isaiah. Back Isaiah verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. He says precept must be upon precept. It says must. must. So when you say, oh, that's Kaiser kind of Wilhelm, you must Prove give a that. precept. That's right. That was not done. To this day. When you judge, it back, never will. Back then, when you judge in the point of law, you had to have multiple witnesses. This book is the witness for whatever you feel the scripture says. You have to back it up. There you go. It says, for precept must be a part of precept. Uh, that's what like. Not what we feel the scripture say, but what we know the scripture say. That's why it says must. Must be a power precept according to what the book says versus vain opinions. That's why David said, I hate vain thoughts. And the vain thoughts, when you look at the extra, it says double minded. Right. Go For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. See that? So you can't just read one verse and not read other verse or read down a verse or go to verse one. Make sure you understand the context. Like Joel 2, you have guys teaching that Joel, the second chapter, is talking about missiles. <laughs> and it's not. Clearly not talking about no damn missiles. It's not talking about missiles because what? after all the locusts that's running to and fro, and, and with the noise and fire and all this stuff that's going on, but it clearly says in verse 25 that everything shall be restored from what the locusts and caper worm have taken from you. Oh, you mean want the missiles? Well, that's what I'm saying. So is America going to be restored after the missiles? See how the doctrine right there alone drops, everything drops. Everything loses its fluid because it's no validity. None. None. You can get mad at us all you want. Just know you kicking against the pricks. We ain't kicking against the pricks because we must stay upon precept and we've been doing it. That's what we're commanded to do. That's what it says right here on these pages. Go ahead. Read that again. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, right. line upon line, uh -huh. line upon line. That's how it's supposed to be. So Isaiah is breaking down to you what, how you are supposed to teach knowledge and understand the true doctrine. Because if you're going precept, it must be upon another precept. That means that you're following another protocol, which is from the heavens, the dominion that is spoken evil against from filthy dreamers. Go ahead. Here a little, and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue. Here a little, and there a little. For with stammering lips, what? Now stammering represents mocking. Yep. Right? So right now, these guys sit here and say, oh, you guys coming with a different doctrine. You guys changing up. Another tongue. <laughs> stammering lips. Mocking. For with stammering. Hey, break this down. Crickets. You being mocked. That's right. You know why? Because we're going precept upon precept. We coming out the scriptures. So it's, it's, we are, we are uh, perceived as stammering lips because it's not what you were taught by the ideologies of the dogmas of men that you reverence so highly. And then you're scared to go into it and break it down. Yeah. Even your elders won't touch it now because the truth is out. Yeah, it's about the chip. Look, man, the chip been here since 2004. Bro. Man, go the chip in here, man. Listen, bro. I knew about the chip before the truth, man. Too, okay. Next. It's in, it's in the don't take the chip. Just like don't eat pork, nigga. Don't commit adultery. Go ahead. Alright. Read this again. Oh, see, that proves me the true prophets. Because the chip is here. Try again. Chip in here, chip in here bro. Go ahead. But I ain't getting. 
says, for with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. That's right. Stammering lips and another tongue. Another song that you guys can't comprehend because you're not going upon precept and making sure that it must be upon precept. Go ahead. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to this rest. This is the rest. You see that? This is the rest. You got guys that's in bondage right now that are laborers but, 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 but have a heavy burden upon their shoulders because of fear, because of the influence of flesh. Which is crazy. <laughs> Which is crazy. Because I mean, you can't, and you rather, and you should rather be free through your house. I was about to say we read the scripture earlier. Fear the one who can kill the body and the spirit. So why are you walking around afraid of the, the, the reprimand or the reproach of some goddamn men? I mean, I, I don't understand. Especially men who are not teaching according to this doctrine. That's right. I don't care about who was set up. All I know is that this was set up before all of us. And guess what? Hey, so why are everybody keep talking about setups? This was set up before all of us. So let's talk about this. Let's, see, let's go. All right, let's go back. Uh, I'll read verse 12 again. To whom he said, this is the rest wherewith he may cause the weary to rest. That's right, the weary is what? Those laborers. Those laborers, man, that are at burden. This is the, I, I, the next line no, says it. No. This is the refreshing Yet they would not hear. Alright, the scriptures, the understanding of these, this knowledge, wisdom, and scriptures right here is what should be refreshing your spirit. Alright? Uh, keep going. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. Says the word of the Lord was what? The word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept. See that? The Lord, the word of the Lord came upon them precept upon precept. precept. That's how Yahweh reveals himself to you. He reveals himself through the layers of the text. Okay? Wait. But the word of the Lord was unto them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little, that they might go and fall backwards and be broken and snared and taken. Alright? So Word of the Lord came upon them, just like how it got broken down in the lines above. Precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line. All right? All right. Uh, well, no, we still in there. Uh, you want to keep going? Yeah. All right, slide. Yeah, hold on. <clears throat> verse 14. Hold on real quick. That's why I go to Matthew 11. Matthew 11. Matthew 11 and 28. 11 and 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. What did you just read? What did you just read? <laughs> Come on. I, what did I he just read? read? Oh, beautiful. Huh? Yeah, what did he just read? Yeah. <laughs> that's what that's talking about, dude. Y'all just be throwing scriptures out. Don't even know what it's talking about. Let me read 12 again. But somebody got to die because you say so. Go ahead, man. It says Isaiah um, 28 12. To whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. The weary to rest. Go ahead, bro. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There you go. Precept on precept. This is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. See how the understanding is going to manifest through the layers of the text? Keep reading now, all the way to verse 30. Okay. It says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. So if he said, I am meek and lowly in heart, does that mean he exalting his gate? No. No. You have these men out here exalting their gate, but our Messiah ain't even exalting his gate. He said, I am lowly and humble in spirit. Right? Uh, Go ahead. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you open the door and let me come sup with you, you'll be able to understand who the locusts are. You'll be able to understand what the two witnesses represent. Go ahead. Oh, that was it? That's no, it. No. 
Oh, that's it on that. Right. Uh, go back to Isaiah. This is uh, because see, uh, you got to you got to remember what Isaiah is explaining. He's explaining how he tries to display the correct presentation as far as bringing precept upon precept and making sure that it must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, according to the book. That's how Berea searched it. That's how the Church of Berea searched it when Paul came. Right. Okay. Go ahead. So. Books. When you when you read the scriptures, man, you can't you can't stop somewhere, put the book to the side, and then start running your damn mouth, man. You gotta you gotta stay within the context of the book, man. You gotta go to another page and say, okay, this means that or that or that's related to this, right? Hey. That's why you can't find Kaiser Sose or Wilhelm, Wilhelm. in the damn <laughs> scriptures, man. So say it's not in there. Okay. Last right? time I checked, it ain't no precept or no law. Saying you know, that it's okay to extrapolate. And those and locusts are the man. angels, man. That's what Joel's, Joel the second chapter is talking about, man. Those are angels, man. It's plain. Go ahead, brother. No, which preacher, man? Uh, this first Thessalonians 5 and 21. Well, they said that that's a precept to Revelation 9, but y'all said the locusts is airplanes, Revelation 9, but Joel 2 is missiles. So how is that a precept to Revelation 9? Because it's confused, man. What's hey. the, what he said. Boy, right. We gonna stick to what he said. Right. Kind. Go ahead. Continue, right. if you will, brother. Uh, this, this First Thessalonians five and twenty one. Prove all things. Hey. Hold fast that which is good. So the wish of death on someone or putting curses on someone is not proving anything. It actually proves that you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Wish death on me after you cut me by breaking down revelation. Well, you, hey, that's even, what you do well, even when, after, when you find me wrong. Well, even after correction, you're not supposed to wish death on God. anybody. What yeah. I'm saying, if you according course. to the law, well, according to the law, you can't. That's how you know you guys don't read the book. That's why I was going to read the next chapter. Right, the next, uh, verse 22, abstain from all appearances of evil. I got to appreciate what I'm saying. See what I'm saying? Now let's go back. Isaiah 28. 14, Isaiah 28, 14. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men. Ye what? Ye scornful men. Ye scornful men. I ain't talking about Esau. That's talking about you wicked ass Israelites. It ain't talking about Esau. It's talking about you wicked ass Israelites. Not true. <laughs> Who don't want to go up precept upon precept. You want to tell me about a dog when you was taught five, six years ago, but don't want to show me the scriptures that back it up. Ye scornful men. Go ahead. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men, that rule this See, people. See, the word of the Lord, not what the elder said. My elder, my, my, this guy. No, what the Lord said, according to what? Precepts. Go ahead. Before hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people. That rule this people, see? Which is in Jerusalem. Mr. Elders of all Israel, Mr. Elder, the uh, bishops and deacons and all this. Look, man. You guys are not going according to precept upon precept if you're teaching that the woes represent. First of all, okay. Well, you idiots. You guys keep saying woe means destruction. Listen, you look up woe, it doesn't mean destruction, it means limitation. Or a loss, or mourning, to lament, that's right. to lament. like you, like 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 the, like like my bro say. If it says go to the woman who have a child or suck, it don't mean that she gonna die with a child, but she's gonna go through some hell God. with that child that have to, that she has to give suck. That's right. Woe to her. That's what it says. Woe to the inhabitants. You guys don't understand the scriptures, man. Which means you guys need to be quiet and cease from the foolishness. Go ahead. All right. Back in verse 14 of uh, Isaiah 28. Wherefore, hear the word of the Lord, ye scorn for men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Right. Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death. See, we made a covenant with death. Keep going. And with hell we are at agreement. And with hell we are with agreement. This is the year of death, diligence, and destruction. I wish death on y'all. I wish destruction on y'all. I wish all these hateful things. <laughs> but then... You don't even really have a lot of the stuff you guys are showing all this anger and animosity towards. You don't really have a lot of scriptural justification. Period. Just follow him in. Just follow him in. Cruel, all right. Let me read that again. Because he have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at uh, agreement. Now, why is that? Why is it that you made a covenant with death? Because you guys are trusting in something that's of corruption. What do I mean by that, man? Rather than trusting in something that's incorruptible. Don't it say strive for the mastery? 
be temperate for the incor for the incorruptible crown. Right? Girl. See, we about these pages, man. What about you? What you about? You about just being told what to do? Yep. Or you about following what's already been instructed for you to do? Okay, hold on real quick. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, yep. it's the overflowing scourge, okay? Shamefulness, confounding, confoundment. Go ahead. It shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge. See, they say, oh, well, see, it ain't gonna help. It ain't gonna come to us because we, we were set up. It's coming to your ass now. We, we, who woke y'all up? We taught y'all this, we taught y'all that. See, these are lies that they build up to create a refuge within where? Their minds. Rest right. even in their Go ahead. Heads, let, the, let the word talk. It shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge. Who made lies your refuge? You tell the guys that this guy's King David, those are lies. That's a refuge that's gonna be knocked down from these pages. And under falsehood, have we hid ourselves? And under falsehood, have you hid yourselves? That's right. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord power, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not corner, make haste. Slow down. A precious cornerstone. Who is that? Man, the Lord is all through this boy. And then it said a foundation. Read. A sure foundation. A sure foundation. You notice how every time. The prophets break down man, and then it goes to the house shot. Breaks down man, or goes to the Holy Ghost. Breaks down man, and then it goes to the Holy Spirit. Breaks down man, and then it goes to Yahweh. And it breaks down man, and it goes back to the law, statutes, and commandments. Break down man, it goes back to what you have heard in the beginning. It always goes back to the text. Every time. Go ahead. All right. Read that again. Therefore. Therefore, thus saith the Lord power, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, uh, a tried stone, uh, a precious cornerstone, uh -huh. a sure foundation. Right. He that believeth shall not make haste. He that believeth in what? The, the cornerstone or the damn corruption? The flesh. Cornerstone. The cornerstone, man. Duh. <laughs> Go ahead. Judgment also will I lay to the line. Judgment to the what? Will I lay to the line. To the what? To the line. To the, what? To the line. Plumb line? That sounds like a plumb line. Sound like you've seen, you seen the plumb line, uh, right? Uh, that that uh, uh, some carpenters might use a plumb line to have. It might be purple or uh, blue or something like that. Good for cutting wood and drywall. You yeah. snap it. It's like a snap line, plumb line. It's a measurement. Right. It's a measurement. Man. I right. remember. It says the bottom is pit. So that's abusu and then pit. That's an immeasurable, and then it says cistern. So that means it's still placed somewhere. It's like a pit. It's a pit. Just like the woman in wickedness was cast into the ether and closed. Yep. And just like the pit was closed and open. Who has the key to open that? Who got the key to open and close that? Yeah, I was shy. Not no go. damn Kaiser couch. Just, just yeah. making sure we're on the same page. Kaiser on the couch with butter popcorn. <laughs> so safe. <laughs> Kaiser says so. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Uh, verse 17. To judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. To the plummet. See that? Once again, because wait a minute. These guys won't break down to us in Revelation 9. Who's actually, who's the men that the locusts are attacking? It's Israel. Goofies. It says, hurt not the men that have the seal. Who are the locusts? Who got the seal? Wait a minute. These guys say the locusts are airplanes. It says, hurt not the men that have the seal, right? Who got the seal? Let's read. Here. Yeah. Let's see who got the seal. Shit, you can get that in Ezekiel. Yeah, but I, you know what? Let, but see, they say it's not the elect. So it says, oh man. Revelation 7 and 3, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, 
till we have sealed the servants. <laughs> Wait a minute. Don't it say trees and grass in Revelation 9 and 4? Absolutely, man. Precept upon precept. Wait, wait a minute. Time out. Who are the trees? Let's you know what? Ahead. Let's just finish Isaiah. I'm just going to go into it. I just go into it. Since we can, we can go into it. We can go into it. We ain't got the man's cheeks. We ain't got to hide. We ain't got to run. We ain't got to be deceptive. We ain't got to keep talking about the same damn broken record all day. The chip. The chip. Don't take the chip. The chip. The chip. Next. The chip. Don't commit adultery. Next. Don't eat pork. Next. Let's get to these words. All right. Back in Isaiah 28 and 17. Judgment also will I lay to the line and righteousness to the plummet. And the hell shall sweep away the it refuge. Says righteousness to the plummet. That's the separation. That's the sanctification right there. That's the, the tares being, the wheat being drawn from the tares. You see that? Go ahead. And the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies. Uh -huh. And the water. The refuge of lies. The hell. That storm. Because the doctrine dropped as the dew from heaven. That's right. We were on 32. So no wonder where the hell would come from to wash out the refuge of lies. Right? Go ahead. Excuse me. And the hell shall sweep away the refuge of lies, uh -huh. and the water shall overflow the hiding place. See that? The hiding. That's right. Go ahead. And your covenant. You know they're saying you guys hide behind your dogmas. You hide behind your doctrines. The truth is going to wash it up. That truth is going to wash Check it, it out. Check it out. There's water right here. Well, let's see what happens in verse 18. It says, mm -hmm. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. Right. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through. Right. That's how I understand it, because you're dead. Your flesh is not upon your bodies. Your bones and sinews are not connected. Like Ezekiel 37. You're dead. You're in the congregation of the dead. Teaching dogmas of men. And not showing it upon precept, which must be upon precept. Go ahead. Let me read that again. It says, And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. That's right. Confoundment. Shame. No. Go ahead. From the time that it this is what Isaiah saying is going to cause shame to those who teach the doctrine incorrectly by those who come upon precept upon precept. Now notice how we went to uh, Revelation 7 and 3 and it said exactly what it said in Revelation 9. So we're going to get it. We're going to show y'all precepts. Because we showed y'all before. But y'all want to be ignorant, act like you ain't hear nothing. It's okay. We're going to troll your ass. You're going to learn how to serve your house shy if you like it or not. You will serve your house shot. Absolutely. If you like it or not. Every knee shall bow. Every. every in my head, huh? Everything. Spirit, everyone will come under the subjection of Hamashiach Yahweh shot. Not under you. Talking about the Most High gonna destroy you, nigga. The most. How you know what the Most High gonna do to you? <laughs> All you guys that left. Such a set, the most high gonna destroy you. I accept it. Man, yeah, listen, man. dude. This is, this, this is what y'all are doing. Listen, dude. Where's Kaiser Wilhelm? Talk about so who gonna be destroyed. Talk about ass out of here, man. Them weak ass gimmicks, man. Go ahead. Verse 19. From the time that it goeth forth, it shall take you for a morning. For, yeah, for morning by morning shall it pass over. By day and by night. It shall be a vexation he only. It shall be a vexation. Why? Because you're kicking against the prince. Vexation only to understand the report. See that? A vexation only to understand the report. We're bringing the report and it's a vexation to you because it ain't what you were taught. But you can file it because you can't debunk it. Because it's part of the book. Goddamn, that's right. It's all right. See God, you got a sentence with death too. That's right. You forgot about that? Your understanding is not as expand expands as you proclaim it to be, man. You have a sentence with death too. All flesh have a sentence with death. Yeah, everybody. So why everybody got to be destroyed except you? It's crazy. But you ask for repentance, right? For your sins, right? Is that what it's saying, Sarah? How you wish harm upon your neighbor, but you ask the Lord for forgiveness and repentance. 
Come on now. Double honors, right? To them that rule well, right? Rule, rule well. well, right? That way. Go ahead, Go ahead. All right. Verse 20. For the bed is shorter than uh than that a man can stretch himself on it. And the covering narrower than that uh, he can wrap himself in. Uh how far you want me to go? Uh Oh, yeah. We're at 21. Okay, that's cool. That's I was cool. about to say, yeah. Right, now let's, let's show precept and how it must be upon precept. Go to Revelations 9. Gotcha. Four. Gotcha. This is it. Uh, you want to get Revelations 7 and 3? Let's deal with precepts. All right. Revelations 9 and 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt Command the grass of the earth. The locusts, right? Yep. The locusts. Well, let's let's go up to verse three real quick. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. That's right. So I don't know how the hell this is airplanes or red barons. You say they came from where? The they? airplanes were given power. Right. Right. What, what did it say they came from? It came out of the smoke. Oh wait, hold on. Let me read that again. There came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And unto them was given power as the scorpions in the earth have power. So once again, we were taught that those are, uh, those are airplanes and tanks, right? Okay. Well, they say Ezekiel 9 is a precept. Cock crew. But that's clearly talking about angels. It's clearly talking about angels. Go ahead, man. Verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth. The what? That they should not hurt the grass of the earth, uh -huh. neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of Yahweh in their foreheads. You know, I tell me who those men are, man, that they hurt. It's funny, right? But it clearly tells you who the men are. Let's come on, man. Now, let's see who got the seal. Read Revelation 73. Go ahead, brother. It's Revelation 73, saying, Hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. Just repeat what you just heard, man, in Revelation 9. That's all it's doing. Actually, it's a setup so you can understand Revelation 9. It tells you you got the key in Revelation 1. It tells you you got the seal in Revelation 7. Then 9, it gives you the prophecies dealing with the wolves. I still don't see Winston Churchill and Kaiser Wilhelm in this situation. Swing. <laughs> okay. Now, hey, y'all can go into it and, and show us where it is, though. It's that easy. Just like we going into it, y'all can go into it. Do a lesson on it, man. Show us what we wrong at. Tell us negative. <laughs> negative. Bah, 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 bah. Now, uh. Back in the revolution. <laughs> now, jump down. Oh. Salakia. Now go to Joel too. I just want to touch on some few things that I've been hearing. All right. Okay. Also, somebody go. Somebody go, man. Oh man. You guys, man. You know it's a good workout though. Workout. It's a good workout, man. Let's jump with the two. Hold on. Two on one. Right. Tried to read this. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Go ahead, just read it, man. This is Ezekiel 34 and 25. And I will make with them a covenant of peace, 
and I will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land, and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. See, man, what you talking about? They gonna be beat up and they gonna die again. The scriptures say they gonna dwell safely. You're an idiot. Cause you don't, you just prove you don't read the Bible. You don't. Now go to Ezekiel 30 and 11. This is Ezekiel 38 and 11. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. And who is thou shalt say? God the Magog, right? And the nations, right? He said, thou shalt say, I will go up to the unwalled what? Villages. Uh-huh. I will go to them that are at rest. At rest? And what else? That dwell safely. That dwell safely. Keep going. All of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. You hear that? You Simpleton? Hear that? Simpleton? That's for you, Simpleton. Got <laughs> cool. That was just for you. It says that he had an evil thought to come against them that dwell safely. What, what, what is transpiring right there? Woe number two. Because it says the dragon in Revelation 11, it overcame the two witnesses and trodden them down. After they were gathered in Revelation 9. And then you have God say, well, when were they beamed up? I know, man. When were they beamed up? When, when were they beamed up? And it, it, it brought to Israel. Go to verse 8, Ezekiel 38. Ezekiel Show you how these guys don't read context. Because they so because they got so much hate in their body that they can't even pay attention. Go ahead. Ezekiel 38 and 8. After many days thou shalt be visited. In the latter days. In the what? In the latter days thou shalt come into the what? In the latter years. Oh, In the latter years thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Where is that at? Israel, man. That's Come Israel. On, is man. that America? Let's try this again. Man. This is so easy. It's easy, man. In the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword. Who is that, Sway? Who is that? Go ahead. And is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel. So how did they get to Israel? If they were gathered from where? Keep going. Uh, from the mountains of Israel, which have always wait, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely, all of them. So, how did they get there? How did they get back to the land that was desolate, uh, brought back from the sword, if there was no transportation from the heavenly Father's vessels? Yeah. Huh? Would they take boats, trains, and Uber, airplanes? And Uber, Uber or they Uber? They Uber. They lift. They took a lift, lift. down there. They carpool. They took a lift? Mm. Lift line. Well, well, and for you, stupid ass. Malcolm, you stupid ass, man. Just stick to teaching Esau, man. You've been in this too long to be a stupid. You're stupid. You're stupid. You weren't the rest of you guys that's been in this for a minute. Y'all just stupid. Y'all stupid, man. Weak, man. Stupid, weak individuals, man. Y'all should know better. Oh, yeah. So you saying, <laughs> you saying that Israel going to get beamed up out of, what means destruction? <laughs> so Jake going to get beamed about destruction? Man, y'all just simple. Y'all stupid, y'all simple, all. man. It says, and I, and I, and the elect shall be scarcely saved. saved. That's what you, you do, dumb man. Ass. I'm sorry, Israel, but he's a dumb ass. You are a dumb ass. That's what you do, man. Start at Revelation 9 and 1. And, and show us. Your way down, man. That's what you do. Stop running all around the book. Grabbing precepts that have nothing to do with what you brought out, man. Nothing to do with nothing. Revelation nothing. 9 and 1 on down. That's where you started. Mm -hmm. If you got balls. Yeah, that's, that's a big, that's a big micro, Now let's talk about the microchip. That's all that's gonna happen. Microchip. Okay, so now, is that it on verse eight? Uh, yes, got it. Okay. Wait, 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 let me make sure. Yeah, that was it. That was right. all I ate. So, like once again, who was the land that was, it said they were gathered from all nations, right? So now, let's go back to Revelation 9. I'm holding that. Okay. We have one part left. Okay. Revelation 9. Where you want to start? Uh, and so now it's clear who has Back the seal, at, right? It's very clear, right? Back and forth. Um. Start at I read, seven. Well, I was about to say I read three and four. So. Start at seven. 
Let's prove that this is not airplanes. Okay. Let's prove it with precept upon precept. Let's do Go ahead. it. Revelations 9 and 7. And the shapes of the locusts were you like... See, I want for the record, too. This ain't no, you guys just trying to just prove the, the elders were wrong. Nah, bro. We trying to prove the Bible versus what man taught us, which is in air. It's the Bible proving. It's the Bible proving. We ain't proving nothing. Ain't nobody else trying to prove nobody wrong. We just showing what the Bible says versus what we've been told. And on top of that, we ain't telling nobody to, to shut down and stop teaching. It's just teach the Bible correctly. That's it. <laughs> bro, it, it's okay. Ain't nobody wishing destruction on, yeah, on, on none of these like on, us. We just up? saying, yo, don't say that. And then I don't say The texts are too far proven otherwise from what you're saying, from what you're teaching. Re-examine, bro. Just, it's simple, man. All right, let's go back to uh, Revelations 9 and 7. Yep. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And their heads were as uh, it were crowns like gold. Hold on. It said, and their heads were crowns like gold. How in the hell, Israel? Just think for a second. God damn, man. Wait, bro. Think. Look, read it again. Yeah. How the hell is this airplane? Let me read the With line. gold line. crowns. Hold up. <laughs> And their faces were as faces of men. Because a plane has a face like a man. Ooh, doesn't it? Okay. Now let's try this again. Let's try this. I'm going to read this again. Okay. So. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on uh, their heads were as it were crowned like gold. And their faces were as the faces of men. Verse 8, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots. Wings. Right. Sounds of their wings. Nah, bruh. Were the sounds of chariots, many horses running to battle. Nah, bruh. Okay, so they say this is airplanes. The scripture clearly tells us through precept upon precept, this is angels. Now, if you go to Joel 2, okay? Let's go to Joel 2. I just had it. I took my finger. Hold on. I got it's all good. We can get right back to it. That's the beauty of it. That yeah. is the beauty. We can go right back to it. Go to Joel 2. Right. There we go. Two and one. Two and one. Yep. Joel 2 and 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it was nigh at hand. See y'all, that's talking about the missiles, huh? Yeah, we'll see. Most I gonna destroy you. We'll see. <laughs> A day of darkness and hey, a- I praise Yahweh, man, that he took me out of this shit, man. I praise Yahweh, man. I thank Yahweh, man. Hallelujah. That he took me out that bullshit. Go ahead. Talking like, about some fucking men with gold crowns in a goddamn airplane. You fucking idiots. Go ahead. A day of darkness and of gloominess. A day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains. See, that's the missiles. <laughs> that's the missiles, all. Yeah, all right. Go ahead, man. A great people and a strong. There have not uh, been ever the like, neither shall be any more after it, even to the years of many generations. Uh -huh, go ahead. Because why? This is the woes, man. <laughs> go ahead, man. A fire devoureth before them, and behind them a flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Uh -huh. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. See, man, that's the missiles, huh? How oh, you can't see that, huh? Keep reading. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. Remember this word. The appearance of horses and what else? And as horsemen, horsemen, so horses. shall they run. So shall they run. Right? Now they say this is missiles. Like the noise of chariots. Like the noise of chariots, right? Remember that. On the appearance of men, appearance of, of running horses, and the noise of chariots, okay? Please keep that in mind. Like the Please. noise of chariots on the tops of mountains shall they leap, 
like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. See that? As a strong people set in battle array. There you go. Before uh, them all. As a what? As the battle array. Hold on. How are these missiles that this is a strong people set in a battle of array? Can I bring out the definition of desolate right quick? Mm -hmm. So, y'all don't think desolate mean it's just gone and destroyed like it don't exist no more? Desolate just means like uninhabited. It's, it's nobody there no wilderness. more. That's right. It's a wilderness. But a wilderness exists, right? Right, uh, the and void, it, and it's poetic for for uh, judgment, man. Right, uh, devoid of inhabitants, uh, deserted streets which were usually uh, so grown now grown desolate, um, uninhabitable. <laughs> then it goes into feeling, go. showing cause, you know, expressing sadness or loneliness. Right. Hey, why you got it wrong? Can you get the definition of woe? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Go ahead, Doc. All right. Back, uh, we'll go back to verse. Slack it. Hold on. We were at, uh, Joel 2, 2, and. So it's enough. We were at 2 and 3, right? Just, just to be assholes. Okay, let me read verse uh, 3 again, once again. No, no, no. Go back to the people uh, who said like a battle array. That's Slacker. That was at... Uh, Damn, I lost four, four, four. Four. Slacker. Okay. Somebody go the to the parents of these five and one. The parents of them... The uh, parents of who? The locusts, right? God. But these were taught to us that it was missiles. Right. But let's look at the appearance of them when well, I was again. Verse 5. Go ahead. Okay, but I'll start at verse 4. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. And as horsemen, so uh, shall they run. You see that? As like, horses, shall they run. Go ahead. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, shall they leap. You see that? Go ahead. Like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble. Right. As a strong uh, people uh, as set as in battle array. set in battle array. How the hell is that missile, Sway? Yep. Precept must be upon precept. All right. Now, what verse is that? That was verse 5, end of 5. Keep going. Verse 6. Before their face the people uh, before their face the people uh, shall be much pain. All faces shall gather blackness. They shall run like mighty men. They shall climb the wall like men of war. They shall march every one on his ways, and they shall not break their ranks. Huh? Neither shall one thrust another. Hold on, it shall not break the ranks. Don't it say in Ezekiel 1 that they move in, unis in unison and don't misplace in their movements? Go ahead, man. All right. Uh, neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk every one in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall, they shall not, not be wounded. That's right. So how is that missiles, man? They're going to just be trying to stab Bad missiles. Hold on. They're going to be stab, stab. Stab! Stab! <laughs> yeah, I stabbed four missiles off before it blew up. Stab a missile. No, Sway! How did you let? No! Okay, now remember, it says running horsemen, right? Yep. To and fro, battle array. Read second Maccabees 5, please. One. Oh, I read that. Second Maccabees 5 and 4. Second Maccabees 5 and 1. Uh, about the same time, Antiochus prepared his second voyage into Egypt. And then it happened that through all this, the city for the space almost of 40 days, there were seen horsemen running in the air. There were seen horsemen running in the air. You got it, bro. And cloth of gold and armor with laces. Battle run. My bad. Come on. Like a band of soldiers. What? But, that, but that's missiles, right? Like a band of Oh, oh man. He said soldiers. band, though, didn't he? Oh, man. Boy, what are y'all reading? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Who y'all listening to? That's the question. Another that's question. That's all right, brother. All right. We're going to go back to this, uh, Joel. Was it, was that, that was it on that? Yeah, yeah that was it on that. All right. Uh, back to, go to verse 11. All right. Joel 2 and uh, verse 11. Yeah, for the there record, Hebrew for wool is uh awaya which means whoa a loss oh passionate cry of grief or despair lamentation sense of crying out interjectionally a woe desire incline covet 
Mongoli, wish, side, want, be, greedy, prefer. Nothing about destruction. Nothing about destruction, no, I, I got I got it in the dictionary. Nothing right? about that, bro. Google. You need to just shut up, bro. And just teach what you are able and capable of teaching, man. Go ahead. Uh, this is, uh, you sound like fools, man. Because right. of your damn pride. Whoa. Great sorrow or distress. That's the Hebrew. Is that the Greek? No, this is just a definition of spring. Oh, okay, go ahead. You got it. Okay. It says misery, sorrow, distress, uh, wretchedness, sadness, unhappiness, heartache, heartbreak, uh, despondency, despair, depression, regret, gloom, melancholy. Hold on, what you said? Hey, we all had a little woe, didn't we? Yeah, straight up. Get some See, woe every day. See, hell yeah. Hey, surely oppression making the wise, wise man, man mad. That's right. Hey boy, listen, man. And it says to them that sigh and cry. That's what? That's what? Man, y'all, listen, man. So it's nothing about destruction, bro. That's the sign I was going through. Too much blood. Wow, <laughs> wow. Just to finish that, uh, trouble, difficulty, problems, trial, tribulation. Trial, tribulation. Misfortune, setback. Oh. That's it. Well, oh, the daughter that went backwards, right? Oh. That's it. That's your woke. So it's clear what the warning horses represent, right? It's clear what the noise. It's clearly said they had what spears, weapons, shields. They were running to. Gang, 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 gang. Were they gang, running to and fro in the air? Sound right. Hey, I, hey. Were they running to and fro in the air? The second Maccabees five and one. Like the same in Joel too. Blowing up over there, then don't blow up over there. Mm. Boom! 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 We just read in Ezekiel 38 that they was brought back into the land. I was brought back from the soil, right? And it says, it says, verse seven, 11 to seven, because they, they, they won't break this down. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. That's the second one. No. How is that World War II? Sure. Number one. <laughs> Number two, these men that were brought back and gathered from all nations, mm -hmm. put back in Israel. Now, wait a minute, let me ask you a question. Did Yahweh have spiritual powers? Yes. And did he still put to death? Yes. Hold on, man, ask y'all a question this again. I'm going to ask y'all this question this once again. I'm going to deny every soap. Yahweh yeah, has spiritual powers, right? Yes. yes. But he was put to death. Yes. Right. John. And he was yeah. raised on the third day. Yeah. Right. You say we so, like him so it says the two witnesses shall be killed. Verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Israel. 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 And they of the people and kindreds of tons of nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in the graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. And because these two prophets tormented them and dwelt on the earth. And after these three days and a half, the spirit of the life, the spirit of life, the spirit of life from power entered into them. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they heard a great voice come from heaven saying unto them, come up hither and they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. But they were dead for three days. After, they were dead after they proceed, had fire proceed from their mouth. That's, that's what you just read. It's in the book, bro. It's in the book. Yeah. It didn't come book. out of your belly. That came out the book. It's in the book. It's plain. Okay? Who else? And then, did about it, right? It says, Two witnesses prophesied for three years, right? Who else prophesied for three years? Y'all shy. Who else prophesied for three years? Elijah. Did Elijah preach the coming of Yahweh Shai? He did. Did John the Baptist preach the coming of Yahweh Shai? He did. So, we ain't gonna go too deep. Hmm. We'll stick to the basics. 
And really, Revelation 9 is basic. It's really basic. It's basic. It ain't deep. You just got to read. Scared to read. The precepts tell you everything. Look, that's just a couple. You've seen the video. But we're going to keep going into it, keep trolling you. But that clearly ain't airplanes, bro. That's, that's really the point of airplanes. what we've been saying. In Revelation 11, what I just read, how, Sway? Where is World War II? Even verse 13, I talk about the earthquake. Wasn't it an earthquake where uh, Hamashiach got crucified? God. Well, hold on, what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4? Get that. Yep, right at Because he just says, they will, the spirit of life came, gave them life, and they went up, came up, the heaven said, come up hither. Right? Let's see what Paul says. Paul, Yahushua gave the, the revelation to Paul too. First Thessalonians 4 and 16. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout. Hold on, wait a minute. It didn't say a voice in Revelation 11? It just said that, didn't it? <laughs> precept must be upon precept. Bom, 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 bom. Bom, bom, bom. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall ascend from the heavens with the shout. You say what, 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 what you say, bro? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the aim with of the archangel. There's the come up hither right there. Sway. Go ahead. And with the trump of Yahweh. Go ahead. And, Go the, ahead. and the dead in Christ shall <laughs> rise. Hey. Read again. Keep going, huh? And the dead in Christ shall rise oh, first. It says, and with the trump of God. See that trump? Trump that's in Revelation. It says, of God, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. Who's that dead? Those that Ooh, were killed for three, three days. So, damn, Sway. Easy. Easy. Simple, man. Why won't y'all go into it? What's wrong? Go ahead. I, I, hey, I'm just going to see how that's World War II. I'm, I'm not sure who, who, who rose from the dead in World War II. That's all I want to know. Go ahead. Guys, keep reading, man. No. Uh, verse 17. Man. Then we, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. That's right, because it's still going to see. Why do you think that the two witnesses are prophesying to the world? It means obviously Yahweh was still trying to reach out to see. And of course, they're going to be persuaded after they see fire proceed from their mouth. Just like Elijah brought down fire to take up the sacrifice that was wet. Right? With the, against the prophets of four, 400 by all prophets. Right? Man, man, man. Now, real quick, Jewel. The proof of the two witnesses is this elect, right? Watch this. That's it on that Thessalonians? Huh? Finish it. Finish that. Uh, verse 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the in the cloud to mm. meet the Lord in the air. Mm. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Somebody gets to Rock 49 and 11. Okay. Somebody gets Zechariah 3 and 8. I'll show you who the two witnesses are. We know the two witnesses go back to Zechariah, the fourth and third chapter, and still in this group of and just with the high priest. But everything is symbolic and has an example as far as what it represents. Okay. Oh this is uh Sirach 49 and verse 11. How shall we magnify? No, 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 no. no. Read uh, Zechariah 3 and 8 first. Oh, Zechariah 3 and 8. Oh, yeah. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest. Uh-huh. That's the other one. That's one witness, right? Who's the other one? It's Zerubbabel. So he's talking to Joshua. Go ahead. Thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wandered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. Mm. Hold on, he said, Joshua, what else? Read it again. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows. Thy that and who? And thy fellows. And who? Thy fellows. Say it one more time. Thy fellows. Where they sit at? That sit before thee. So it's not the two witnesses they elect. Yeah. And they say they are men wandered. Precept must be upon uh, precept. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Here a little, there a little. So that you may give the weary rest. Uh, uh, 
49 and 11. 49 and 11. That's it on that, bro? Yeah. That's it on that? Go ahead. Show that show 49 and 11. So he says, right. him and his fellows. Sirach 49 and 11. How shall we magnify Zerubbabel? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. You say what, Charles? How shall we magnify Zerubbabel? How shall we what? Hold on, is Zerubbabel a witness? Right. Is he not one of the two witnesses? Right. And it said, how shall we magnify? So that's, this is an example. This is an example, right? This is an example. Go ahead. Even, man, you know what, man? Right, man, listen, man. See, we have, we, we have fun with this truth, man. We love this truth. It's, 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 this is the refreshing that Isaiah was talking about. Go ahead. Oh, it says, read that precept. Uh, it says, How shall we magnify Zerubbabel? Even he was as a signet on the right hand. Ooh. Now, what was the signet? The signet was what? Uh, like a, a ring, like a stamp, like you ever seen. Back in the day when it they said had that in Haggai, in the second chapter, twenty-third verse, it says that you shall be a signet. Those were typically the rings that got used to like seal a letter yes, or a bullet, like a bullet. Yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. Yep. Yep. See, we study, man. <laughs> go ahead. Huh? Um, want me to keep going? Now? It says, um, yeah, for so, yeah, yeah. so y'all, y'all was shy, the son of Jehoshaphat. Who in their uh, time built the house uh -huh. and set up an holy temple to the Lord, which oh, was the Lord. Didn't it say, hold on, didn't it say in verse 1, Revelation 11, it said, take the rod and cut out the temple and leave out the rest? Is yeah. that not the building of the temple? Yep. Read that again. So was Yahweh the son of Joseph, who was, uh, who in their time built the house and set up a holy temple to the Lord, which was prepared for everlasting glory. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, once again, and this is just a quick run through, man. We guess we're gonna we're gonna do quick run throughs. This is gonna be in, within the ministry because it's prophecy we have to speak it. But so it's clear. Way it's Office. It's clear mm -hmm. that the locust is not airplanes, not red sure. bear and pizza. It's clear that Revelations 11, Woe 2 is not talking about World War II. Hey, hey. It's yeah. clear that Joel 2 is not talking about missiles, it's talking about the locusts. You know what? Do, do me a favor. Go back to Joel 2 and read verse. Uh, I'm still home. Still home. I'm still home. What, is, what is that? 20? We left off at 11. Right, because that's a lot. Read that again. Uh, okay, straight, straight, straight cut. Back to uh, Joel 2 and 11. That's a cut for the two witnesses you painted, man. Yeah. Joshua and his fellows. Uh, Joel okay. 2 and 11. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For he is a sh for he is strong that executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? Therefore also now shall the Lord turn ye even to me with all your heart and with fasting. And with weeping and with mourning. Well, I thought the missiles killed everybody. <laughs> but they came back, didn't they? Hold on, go to verse 25, bro. <laughs> Hold on. I thought everybody was dead. Yeah, about to die, yeah. Hey, hey, come on. Okay, so now, now let's go to Joel 225. All right. Because uh, we're still trying to find these missiles. They're going okay. to and from. Still man. trying to find these missiles. All right. Joel 225. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. This was heavy. Wait a minute. I thought America was gonna be <laughs> never, never to be inhabited again, right? Never more. Now have we was taught back then? A yes. big wait. A big. Oh, what did he say? A big. Now remember in Isaiah. In the wilderness, a big flame. It was gonna now be nothing. remember in Isaiah 28 it says that a flood shall come and wipe all the refuge of the eyes out. That's when you go precept upon uh, precept, 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 it must be upon precept. Yeah. Everything else gets washed out. Hey man. Bro. So how is it the missiles going to, so how is it that if this is going to be America being short it's going to get restored? It's going to get restored. According to your, which one is it? 
it gonna get destroyed? Was it gonna get destroyed or restored? Maybe neither. 200 million missiles, right? Neither. 200 million. Mm -hmm. 200, right, 200 million missiles. Right. And you got the largest missile, which is, uh, what, Satan 2? Satan 2. And it only can hold 10 warheads. But somebody just, said, just not that. Just not that, no. It ain't adding that, bro. Okay. Uh, go to uh, you want me to finish it or? Go to Revelation 9 and 8. Back to Revelation 9. Just ain't adding nothing. We just, we just, we just going over stuff, man. This is uh, Revelation 9 and verse 8. Fine tune. This is here. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. See that? It said, as the hair was the hair of women, right? Now remember, this is poetry, man. So I'm gonna read the precept. First Corinthians 11 and 9 and 10. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. <laughs> and what are we speaking about in Revelation 9? The angels. Angels. He was like, he was like, <laughs> that's one right. Israel, shut him out. <laughs> oh, man. Go ahead. All right. So, uh, Revelations 8, I mean 9 and 8. So, hold on, hold on. So, right. So, it says that dealing with the hair, right? It's poetic. It's poetic, man. So, then it says, verse 15, but if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. When you go back to verse 10, it says, go back up, it says, for this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. So it's poetic. Right. So <laughs> that's why I liken a woman had glorious liken the glory to the woman of hair because they know that the glory, the glory of the woman is her hair. What's the covering of it? Oh. It's all it's, it's just oh. poetic. Yeah. Just poetic, man. Poetic. Damn. You get it, bro? Yeah. Now check this out. Revelations 9. I'm just bouncing, man. We just, we just, we just, hey, just go with the flow, bro. We sparring. We just sparring. That's all. Jab, jab. One, two, three. Big black and Jab black straight. Black left hook. Mm -hmm. Uppercut. Jab, double jab, triple jab. Revelation 9 and 11. I knew you was going to that. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. How is this Kaiser? Go ahead. Whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue have his name Apollyon. And they clearly know that's destroyer. And they clearly know Yahweh Shai is also called destroyer. Not Yahweh Shai on the pale horse? Mm -hmm. She is. Is she not the angel of death? She is. It's not Yahweh create evil? She does. She is. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Straight. <laughs> so, wait a minute. Now, let's jump down to verse 16. <laughs> Keep me going. And the number of the army of the horsemen was were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. That's missiles, huh? Missiles. But go to Hebrews twelve twenty two. Wait a minute. Good. Hold on. It's why I go to Psalms sixty eight twelve, sixty eight seventeen. Slot the Psalms. Hebrews twelve twenty two. Hebrews twelve. Yes. Uh, Hebrews 12 and 22. But ye are coming to Mount Zion and unto the city of the living power, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels. Mm -hmm. Somebody numbered, gets man. somebody gets second angels 13 and 11. <laughs> you can't be numbered, man. Hey, hold on, bro. Right, Wait man. a minute, bro. Can you, can, you, can, you, can you really number 200 thousands, thousands? You can't. Try. Well, how is this missile to you, guys? Go ahead. Uh, this is second Ezra is thirteen and eleven. And I numbered her, and I numbered her contr contrary fathers. And behold, there were eight of them. And I looked, and behold, on the right side there arose one father, 
and reigned over all all the earth. Verse 13. And so it was. Verse 3, bro. Uh, Three. Uh, second Ezra, second Ezra, 13 and 11, right? 13 and 11. Right, okay. Just read it again. Okay. The second Ezra is 13 and 11. And I, numbered her and I numbered her contrary fathers. And behold, there were eight of them. Verse 13. And I and I looked and oh, behold. You're in second Ezra 13? You're in, no, bro. You were not in chapter 13. Right. Mm. Thirteen and eleven. It's kind of dark. It's kind of dark. I was eleven. Thirteen. Dyslexic. The second Ezra thirteen eleven. Yeah, I be doing that too. And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire. The blast of fire. Same thing. Same Joel too. Same boy. The flaming breath. See. And the great temp. The great tempest. Uh huh. And fell with. And fell with violence upon. The multitude which were prepared to fight and buried them up every one so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude an innumerable multitude a multitude that could not be counted is that missiles an innumerable multitude no thing was to be perceived but only dust and and smell of smoke. Hold on, the same smoke that came out the bottom of this pit? Hmm. Uh, uh, so I was about quite right. <laughs> Go ahead. And when I, I saw this, I was afraid. Yeah, I bet he was, because I'm afraid. Just read it. <laughs> because it's gonna be a, it's gonna be like a day that never was before. Yeah. All right? Now. I just grew. Psalm 68 to 17, brother. We'll wrap it up with that. All right, this is Psalm 68 to 17. It says, the chariots of Yahweh are 20,000 even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them. That's a new one, right? That's a new one. So with that, we're going to give all, all praises, praises to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Precept must on be precept. upon precept. Stick to the script. The whole world. Trust not in man's flesh and arm, man. Trust not in man's flesh and arm. Look like he's are you saying that yeah. they, they, they trust in man's flesh and flesh's arm? There you go. Shalom, Shalom, Shalom.